from at least the 1770s and 1780s, anti-slavery groups in Britain and North America began coordinating political attacks on international slavery. Initially focused on abolishing the international slave trade, by the turn of the 19th century, anti-slavery activists paid increased attention to sensational claims about slave breeding practices in the Caribbean and mainland North America. The anti-slavery focus on slave breeding intensified in the United States during the 1830s and 1840s, reaching a crescendo in the 1850s, as black and white abolitionists deployed sensational and sentimental rhetoric to attack the slave South. As one of the most important literary genres of the 18th and 19th centuries, sentimentalism was particularly important to abolitionist representations of slave breeding. Sentimental literature set out to appeal to the reader's moral senses. The goal of the author was to awaken one's feelings and emotions for a given subject. One need only skim through 19th century newspapers to see how often the word horror appears to describe audience or read a reaction to descriptions of the more lurid abuses of slavery. As Victoria Bynum observes of abolitionist descriptions of slavery, most white Americans were too horrified by tales of racial violence and lust to question their veracity. In this sense, sentimental literature increasingly became politically and morally charged during the 19th century. African American authors thus recognized the value of sentimental language in political discourse. As literary scholar Valerie Smith observes, black abolitionists like Frederick Douglass and Harriet Jacobs, used the convention of sentimental literature to undermine the cultural and socioeconomic structures that buttressed slavery. Abolitionists defined slave breeding as the coercive reproduction of new generations of slave laborers for sale and resale. They added that slave breeding practices highlighted the immoral commodification of reproductive sexuality in Caribbean and North American plantation societies. It was impossible to talk about slave breeding, abolitionists maintained, without also discussing the emotional and physical abuse that slave breeding schemes had on enslaved women, the anguish such practices caused when a husband, a wife, and or children were separated and sold away from family, and the violence and exploitative power that the slave-owning and slave-trading classes exercised over enslaved people. African-American memories and representations of slave breeding began taking shape in this politically charged atmosphere and era of cultural sentimentalism. But before we delve into an analysis of these memories and representations, it is important to begin with a comparative overview of anti-slavery and abolitionist discourse from which these representations entered popular and political culture at the end of the 18th century. <laughs> 